back to my very own reading corner. So guys, today I'm going to be making a book called What Floats, What Sinks, A Look at Density. So let's head on. So here's a table of contents so you guys can take a pause if you guys want to look at the table of contents. Floating and sinking. An object floats when it rests on top of a liquid or when it rises in the air. Apples float in water. Hot air balloons float in the air. As you guys can see, it shows a picture of kids wash apples in a metal um, wash tub. Notice that the apples are actually floating. An object sinks when it drops down in liquid or when it falls down through the air. Rocks sink in water. Rocks would also sink in air. So you guys can see these pebbles can't float in water. They couldn't float in air either. Solid objects are not the only things that float and sink. Liquids and gases do too. A bubble is a liquid with gas inside it. Bubbles float. Corn oil and syrup are both liquids. Corn oil floats in syrup. Do you guys see the corn oil floating on the surface of the syrup? Milk and chocolate sauce are liquids. The sauce sinks in milk. If you've ever poured chocolate sauce into milk, then you know that the sauce will sink. Helium is a gas. Air is made up of many gases. The air in our environment is made up of many gases. Helium balloons flow in the air. Gases such as propane and butane do not flow in air. The helium inside these colorful balloons allows the balloons to float. Density. All solids, liquids, and gases have density. Density is how heavy something is compared to its size. The ball is very dense. It isn't very big, but it's extremely heavy. The candy treats are about the same size. One is solid chocolate. The other has a lot of air inside. The solid chocolate has more density. So something has more density basically when more of the material is like together is like compressed into it's what it the object is right now. These coins have more density than the water. The force of the water isn't strong enough to hold them up. So objects sink if they have more density than the liquid or gas they are in. Objects float if they have less density than the liquid or gas they are in. This beach ball, for example, has less density than the water. The force of the water can hold up the ball. Shape. An object's shape can make it sink or float too. The swimmer can float when she stretches out on her back. A large part of her body is touching the water. More water can push against her. This swimmer tucks in her arms and legs. She sinks to the bottom. The water can push against only a small part of her body. So that means that she's going to sink all the way to the bottom because there's a less part of her body um, that the water can hold up. This ship is very heavy. Its shape helps it float in the ocean. Ships like this one can weigh more than 60,000 tons, which is 54,000 metric tons. And 60,000 tons is literally a hundred. So 60,000 tons is equal to 120,000 pounds. There are many rooms and open spaces in the ship. These spaces are filled with air. The air makes the ship less dense. Ships sink if too much water comes inside. The water pushes out the air. The ship becomes denser. So you guys all probably know the Titanic, which is a famous ship. So it sank because when it got hit by an uh, iceberg, people think it got hit by an iceberg, then water was filled inside, which made it more denser and made it sink. Water level. Look where the water level is in this bowl. So this is the water level. You guys see the green part? It shows the water level, so the water level is a little bit low. Um, it's on the near the bottom of the bowl. Ice cubes float in water. Adding ice cubes makes the water level rise. 
the water level used to be here it's higher now as you guys can see it used to be a little bit lower than what it is now so you put some like ice in it which is kind of like an object it made it higher rocks sink in water adding rocks makes the water level rise the water level was here before the rocks were added do you see how much higher it's risen so first I added the cubes and it rose and then they added the um rocks and then it rose more when an object is in a liquid or a gas the object pushes the liquid or the gas out of its way this makes the level of the liquid or gas rise when these boys got in the tub their bodies pushed the water out of their way this made the tub's water level rise higher every day floating and sinking people use things that float and sink every day anchors like this one sink to the sea floor people use hooks when they go fishing a hook sinks to catch a fish people travel in a hot air balloon how is floating and sinking important to you i want you guys to think of that question how is floating floating and sinking important to you guys so here's an activity you guys can do so you guys can just pause the video if you guys want to read the activity and do what is shown here here's the glossary if you guys want to know what specific vocabulary words mean you guys can also pause and hear some further reading okay guys hopefully you guys enjoyed this video so guys i have two questions for you guys so the first question is yeah how does um sinking and floating affect you why do you need to know more about sinking and floating and my second question is, give uh, four examples, uh, so that means actually give two examples of objects that sink and two examples of objects that float. And it can be either in air or in water. Okay guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want more of these videos, don't forget to smash that like button. I'll see you guys in another awesome video. Bye guys!